What's up, everybody? I got Acove here from Space Yetis, and uh, I guess my first question is, what is your your role over there, and uh, uh, what do you take care of? So there's, I guess, there's two founders. So I guess we're co-founders. So okay. I'll be identified as a, you know, as a co-founder. Basically, for me, I mostly run the project in terms of Discord community. That's what I do. I say Mike is more in charge of Twitter. And, uh, you know, he talks a little bit more to devs. I talk to devs too, but mostly my role is just Discord community, keeping the community active and together because community, in my opinion, is number one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I uh, I agree. I, I was just talking to Bears Deluxe, and uh, one of their biggest things is that people are always talking in chat, and even more so than the project utility. I think people, those relationships end up being more important than the project utility, bar none. Definitely, yeah. Okay, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, I kind of want to go in two different directions. One is just you as a person and how you've grown in NFTs, you know, because my goal is... Um, to grow people in the space and kind of what kind of skill sets are going to be valuable in addition to uh, like project oriented. So it's kind of, you know, if somebody wants to learn about space yetis, they can do so. And if they also want to learn how to be successful in the space, they can also do that because uh, I know you guys kind of ran into some errors with elves. If you want to, you know, kind of go on what happened with that and what people could do to, you know, avoid problems like this in the future. Yeah, so getting into the first topic, I was just to get into basically um, trading NFTs itself. So I started trading, I want to say, like, you know, summer, I guess when everybody else started. Yep, yep. You know, yep. Uh, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing I recommend is, you know, you're, you're going to learn from your mistakes. People can, like I was telling my cousin, because he, he wanted to get into NFTs. I, I, I told him I could sit with you and for hours and explain everything and yeah you, you're gonna take some of that but mostly you're gonna learn from your mistakes you trading and all this i mean yeah there's gonna be mistakes and you're probably not gonna do them anymore because you know you're playing with money technically yeah. you're playing with your <laughs> yeah, material. yeah so that's how i learned was with mistakes you, you can watch videos and everything in my opinion yeah you're gonna learn you're gonna learn but it's it's more hands-on in my opinion you yeah. have to get in there. You have to trade, and you're gonna make money. I mean, as long as you get good at it and learn from your mistakes. And I think the most important thing is volume in NFTs. If there's no volume, it ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I could, I could, yeah, I could see that. You know, because when you got um, a Discord with you know sixty, seventy thousand, hundred thousand people, and you have five thousand release, man, you know, you know that there's gonna be an upward momentum because you're gonna have price action. People are gonna be definitely, lying. yeah. I mean, you can't just look. I, I know people go through discords. And there's a way. There's a way I go through discords. I mean, most of these discords have ranking systems, where most I, I want to say like most of the discords right now, fifty percent, sixty percent, forty percent, they have bots. They they forty percent of those are bots. I'm not gonna lie to you. No, if, I, especially I if that. they have invite challenges. They're gonna be botted. Hard, hard. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. What I do, what I do, I go into the rank system. If I haven't talked a single word, just do you know the ex exclamation mark rank, and it's gonna tell you how many people I've talked in the Discord. If you were to go to a Discord with like thirty thousand people and it has like two thousand, three thousand talked, I mean, mm. come on, that's like ten percent. Yeah, have talked yeah, in the yeah, Discord. yeah. Okay. You can just. I know there's a lot of people that don't talk and. You know, some people just like looking, which, yeah. But there's, I mean, people have to talk. Yeah. They, they have to ask questions. And that, that's the big red flag when it goes to that, when it goes into looking to the skirts. Okay. And what the other question was about Project Suite? Um, no, they, it was... First question was basically about elves and, you know, what what error happened and then how can people avoid this in the future if they're creating a project if they're um starting something up if they want to be involved with the project what are some good you know tricks of the trade that uh, you learned you know unfortunately the hard way 
Yeah. I mean, Elf was my first project, of course. I didn't have that much experience, you know, hiring people as developer, artists, and all that. Thankfully, the artist ran really well, which is Pong. Super well-known guy. Um, but unfortunately, with the dev, you know, I, I we did hire him. We interviewed him and everything. But honestly, we don't we don't technically know if he messed up bad. If he knew what he was doing and he messed up. Or he just catfished us yeah. in terms of, you know, oh, I can do this, but he couldn't actually do it. You know, and then uh, and there's a lot of pressure applied to him because he did laid the launch twice. And, you know, people were getting mad and everything. And he eventually, you know, I guess under pressure released a shitty project, a sh- shitty project, a shitty contract. And it eventually, you know, it looked bad and everything. And I guess he, he took the ETH he needed to take. He just took the 10 ETH. And because, I mean, he, he messed up. And it, it. it sucks that he it. rugged. It sucks that he rugged and everything. I mean, we already paid everything back to those elf holders, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But I would say, be more careful with people who you choose. Okay. If you're gonna choose an artist, make sure they have experience. Because art, I mean, art is difficult too. I want to say, yeah. if they're starting the very first projects, I mean, you got to take into consideration layers and that. You know, it, it can all fuck up. Oh, can I say bad words? I don't know. Well, we try to keep it clean, but it's, you know, it's not a huge deal, man. You don't have to be, like, hypersensitive about it. Yeah. They can all mess up. I mean, developer-wise, hire people with experience. You know, we ended up hiring Inu, super experienced. The guy worked on hundreds of projects, not hundreds, but tens of projects. Um, But I want to say go through, like, thoroughly, hire people that have experience, especially if you're going to hire a community manager. I want to say that's one of the most important things. Um, hire somebody that has worked with projects. Community managers can help with marketing as well, um, in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you don't have somebody who has experience running a project and it's your first time, you're going to have difficulty. Okay. You're, you're going to have a lot of difficulty. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, now, a community manager, what would you put under their responsibilities? You know... Um, some community managers help with Twitter, I want to say. Okay. And that's a big form of marketing. I, I think Twitter's going to, you know, we, we we didn't really see Twitter that much back in the day, in my opinion. Now Twitter's like a must-have, and people use Twitter yeah. to their advantage. You know, we used it to our advantage on Space Cities by locking the Discord and having Twitter as one of the only ways of entries. And that's bu- that, bu- that built our Twitter to, I want to say we were like at 10, 11,000 before we release in like yeah. three weeks, which, you know, it, it built it really quickly. I want to say Twitter is a really good way of free marketing, in my opinion, because there's people that hit you up in terms of marketing and they want to charge you and, you know. Yep, yep. We, for Space Yetis, we didn't pay. We paid zero for marketing. We did it all ourselves. And, you know, that just comes from experience. Like if you hire a good advisor or a community manager that knows what he's doing, he can do that. And I definitely, see. you know. He can be in charge of giveaways. He can be in charge of the community. And especially if he if he likes to take on the challenge of Twitter and help with marketing, you know, that's all plus science for that community manager if he has experience under his belt. I see. Okay. And uh, one, one thing you did, you guys did really, really well, which I was um, pleasantly surprised, is you swiveled after, you know, that dev did whatever he did. You guys swiveled and built trust again. Which honestly, I, at that point, you know, I was like, man, I, I don't know if they're going to be able to do this. And you did. And I, I kept seeing people on Twitter and they were like, don't forget Space Yetis, don't forget Space Yetis. And I was like, no way. And people had confidence in you guys even after that happened. And I, I, I guess uh, my question is, is, you know, how did you build confidence? Even after, you know, something that would seem so glaringly, um, oh, that's a project ender, it didn't. You, you you skated right forward and went into a, a, a perfectly sold out mint right after and uh how, how do you guys think you you did that well honestly it's building trust was in the community that's the number one thing you know um i would think the number one thing is doing amas and actually talking to people that's the most important thing i think amas are the number one way to build trust 
Okay. And we were we were hosting it. We hosted AMAs about three times a week right before the Elsmith. Oh wow. So we so we were building trust left and right and I was always in chat. I spent hours in chat just talking to people, answering questions. There wasn't a, a question that didn't go unanswered. I mean even the most difficult questions I would answer them. And you know, people other devs just skip over them or don't even talk in chat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think like like I said, AMA I think it was the number one thing to help us build the trust. And I don't think we lost trust during that whole thing. I mean, a lot of people still trusted us and they were they wanted to move forward with us and they did move forward with us and that's why we're here. Yeah. And I just think it's like I said, building that trust, if you don't build that trust as a founder, you're not going to get too far because, you know, that's what builds the community. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, um, my last meeting with uh, one of the co-creators of Bears Deluxe, I asked him the question, you know, how do you build trust when anonymity is so important? And uh, he talked about track record being way more important than your name. And he's like, you know, there's no success in a name, but your track record and what you promise and what you do is important, which can be attributed to a picture. It can be attributed to um, a, a, a name. It can be attributed to anything. You can build trust around anything, you know, as long as it's a promise and actually, you know, coming to fruition with it. So, yeah, I, I, that, yeah that, that makes sense. That is true. I agree with him. Transparency and, you know, actually delivering on what you put out there. I guess another way can be, um, how do they say it? Under promise and over deliver. Be yeah. a great way to build trust. Yeah, no, absolutely. We've always delivered. I mean, we're a month old and we already have our token out and breeding's going to come out by the end of the month or start of February. Just yeah. in a month. Yeah, I saw I mean, that. we're moving forward super quickly. Yeah, that's, that's actually one of the things I wrote down because I was so, you know, usually there's like a... Um, a, a bit of a time period before, you know, people will actually get working on whatever it is that they've promised, you know? And I will say that as far as, cause how, how long did it take you guys to get your token out after mint? Uh, it was almost like right away. Yeah. We already had the contract ready. It was just the website UI that had to be done. But honestly, right after mint, people were already generating the token because we have passive generating, but there was just no way to track it. Not until the UI came out. Ah, uh, I see, I see. So technically, right away, you were already generating the token. Wow. Okay. Okay, so this is a question I had. Um, you guys are moving into Sandbox, and it's a pretty simple question. Why? Why Sandbox? Yeah, so we we didn't say we were moving into Sandbox. We said we were going to buy a LAN in case, you know, future utility did come out. We know Sandbox is a little hard to get into, but we do have the connections to get into it. And we do have the VX. I don't know if you've seen our VX, but... I did, yep, we yep, do. I saw that. We, yeah, we have the base model out. Um, it would be mostly just finishing the traits and using our connections to get into there. But it doesn't have to be Sandbox. We have partnered with other projects um, or looking to partner with other projects and different metaverses. And definitely sandbox is an option, but right now we just plan on buying the line and having it there in case we do go due to that route. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause right now I, I think sandbox is only an alpha and you can only, you can only create in it if you own land, correct? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. Correct. Yeah. I, yeah. I, and I, I've been hearing it's hard to get into, so. Yeah, no, I I haven't really uh-huh. looked. I, yeah, I hadn't really looked into it myself. But it seems like the most, you know, um, you know, Minecraft is is the most downloaded game in the history of mankind, and Sandbox mm-hmm. is, you know, a version of. So it it, it seems like if you're going to do something thinking it's going to be widespread, and uh, not niche, then you know it's the way to go. No, yeah, definitely. That's why we want to have the land there. You know, uh-huh. we want to be ready. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're definitely looking to buy. Was it difficult to create a VX collection? Like, how how much time actually goes into, like, creating all the art for, you know, for Space Yetis? Like... Yeah, so we haven't created the whole VX collection yet. Okay. We just have the base model. Now, after that, would be creating the traits. Okay. But in terms of art, 
It honestly depends how many traits you have. So we have, I, I want to say, a little bit over 80 traits, which is pretty decent for our collection size. It's actually a good amount. Um, you know, some projects can vary from 60 to 100 or two. I know Kaiju is 150, and they have a lot of traits. Yeah. But, you know, it can vary, and it's definitely on the amount of traits you're doing and how long the artist takes, that's on them. But for VX, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, since it is a little bit... I guess you have to get the whole kind of like 360 of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is a lot more expensive, I want to say. If you're looking for a whole VX collection, you're probably looking at about 50 ETH. To get it done by someone else? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. say around 50 ETH, depending on the artist. Yeah. So it is really expensive. Okay. Yeah. I and that also that. just depends on the traits. If you have less traits, less ETH, of course, more traits, more ETH. Yeah, but it, yeah. it can get really expensive. Yeah, one thing you you touched on was uh, you said make sure you have an artist that's that knows the space. And uh, I did a launch with um, I basically was like the community manager and a couple other things, um, like finance manager for a project maybe like two or three months ago. And we've been looking for artists in the three D render space, and none of them really knew about NFTs. And we've gone through like two, three, four artists now. Um, after them like saying yes for two and three weeks and, uh, just to jump on the end of you saying that it is like heavily crucial that you have somebody that knows what they're doing in the space. Cause if you get two, three weeks into somebody and then you've put money towards them and then they actually find out they, they don't know what they're doing, the, the time cost is almost worth worse than the ETH cost because you know, you're delaying and delaying and delaying and it just it looks bad for the community. Yeah, definitely. That's why I always, you know, I always just kind of like preach, get someone with experience, definitely. They might be a little bit more cost-worthy, but it, it comes out, you know, being better for the overall project and for yourself, waste yeah. less time. Yeah, do you find you have to you have to manage it a little bit less? Like maybe you, is it more that you can just give some direction and then they can kind of run with it? Yeah, like if you get a good artist, they can, you know... It's basically what we did on our side. We made a list of traits, and he basically did what he had to do, you know? Okay. It's less manageable. He, You're paying him to do his job, basically. Yeah. And he's just doing it. Some artists also, they, they like doing the traits themselves. You know, they'll take on the full responsibility, and they'll show you what they got. And if you like it, if you don't like it, they can, you know, make some changes to it. Yeah. It just depends on the artist. Okay. Um. Okay, here's a question. Um, if you had to do this process all over again, what are the key roles for a team that you'd assemble? Yeah, kind of like I was speaking in, into it before. I would okay. say... Uh, I would say it's, it's going to be a lot easier because I have the experience and I went through the ups and downs, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. So getting getting a team and with, with the connections I have right now, uh, are you talking like if I were to like start like noob? Yeah, or yeah. Like... If you were just to start a project right now, no. Even with, I, I, I guess connections are important, but I was thinking more of like, Super important. yeah. I was thinking more it in the makes lines. A big difference. You think? It, it does, yeah. Like if if you're coming into it without any connections, it does. It really does. That's what I'm saying. I don't know where you want me to head with the question. I mean, I, if yeah. I were to have the connections, I would know exactly who to hire. Uh, you I know, see. But if I don't have the connections, you know, I'm a. This is going to be a little harder. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking more of like the role identity. You know, like you'll need like an artist. Yeah. You'll need like a community manager. More because I'm I'm trying to gear the question towards people who are wanting to create something. They're like, well, I don't even know what pieces I need to assemble to create something. So I'm wondering, you know, if you had to, you know, assemble what pieces, like what are the most integral parts of a of a project to have those people that are devoted specifically to that. Yeah. I, I want to say, get, try and get a buddy with you, a co-founder. Okay. Um, I think, I think that's super important. Number one, try and get a guy that actually puts in work, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he's as dedicated as yourself. You can have a team member or a co-founder like Mike and I, we, I, I say we put the pretty much the eco amount of work. If I were to have a co-founder, um, and actually, going back to Els, we actually had another founder. Um, but before we released, we had to remove him, actually. 
because he was not putting in enough work. Yeah. He was he he basically came into calls like, you know, we have our team meetings and all that. He would come to calls and not even throw in that many ideas and et cetera, et cetera. So it's something like that where you have to find somebody that has the same worth ethic as yourself and, you know, has the same uh, is is that aspired to have a great project as yourself hmm. and then once once you find that that guy i would say start looking into artists and developers you know an, an artist is definitely somebody that has experience and has worked on past past projects and can show you their best their past projects you can even go through and go to their founders of those past projects and ask about the artist or ask about the uh, developer that's a good yep that's good yeah Definitely, you know, they can say, oh, they were toxic, they gave us a hard time, um, they were really good. You know, going through that, especially with a developer, you want to ask the most people as possible what they think about them and their past work. I just think that's super important, um, especially the, the they can be lying. You can, they could just be like, oh, I did it for this project, you know, mm, and if you don't go and ask the sense. owner or the founder, oh, no, like, there's been times like that where, you know, I try and hire somebody and it's, you know, it's, it's not them. It's not actually them. They didn't actually help. Huh. And they, it's effort, you know, cause they want to make money. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to say going past, going past to their past project founders would be the best and interviewing them, you know, maybe getting a call and be like, yo, what do you think about him? You think he's a good hire? Um, the artist, the developer, et cetera. And then it'll, it'll be eventually finding an advisor or community manager or just both. You know, an advisor, a guy that has experience running a project or marketing or any of those, you know, I, I just think yeah. it's super important. There's so many mistakes you can make pre-sale, uh, you know, after you, you sell out. There's so many mistakes you can make that can definitely hurt the project or even kill the project, in my opinion. And you not knowing those mistakes, you, you, you will make them. You will make them. And that's why having an advisor, it's a, it's a good idea. You know, I've helped plenty of projects before that are launching based on what decisions to do to basically let's just say have a healthier mint so, you know they they started yeah. they stopped selling at a, a certain amount okay like i need to get to my i need to mint out what can i do there's a lot of things you can do you can do incentives you can you know just working with the community to help and mint it out and it's, it basically goes to choose the right people that's what i want to say choose the right people that know what they're doing because if it's your first project and you don't know what you're doing you're gonna need the help <laughs> yeah yeah okay wow dang yeah that's a really good answer uh, yeah I, I can go into it a lot i mean you know you can go into it a lot but i just just choose a good advisor in my opinion choose somebody that has ran a project to help you out either a friend or either you pay him or you know because I think that's number one. You can make so many mistakes that can hurt the project. Yeah, I could, I could it see really that. really cause yeah, problem to all your work. Especially when you know you're building, you talked about earlier, building trust. And, uh, you know, it's, it's crucial in the space, especially because everybody's anonymous. And, you know, that trust is basically the only thing that holds together a relationship. It's not proximity. It's not, you know, sometimes it can be conversation without trust. But really, you know, most of all, when money's between a relationship, you know, that, that trust is so important. So that makes sense. You know, I didn't think about necessarily, you know, having an advisor being something that's such an important role because they can at least at least run your ideas past and be like, good idea, bad idea. Like, is this <laughs> is this going to flop? You know, how, like, how are people going to feel about this? And that would save you heartache. You know, that would be worth five, six, seven percent of your mint or whatever it is. You know, just to know you're not going to make some huge error. Yeah, definitely errors. I mean, you know, you you want what's best for the community, and some pe sometimes people don't really think on what they've released or what they say. And, it, and that sticks with the community and it can definitely hurt people or turn around people and be like, I don't want to mint this. Yeah. And it, like, I want to say going into AMAs, if you, in, in AMAs, you have to be skilled, in my opinion. You, you do have to be skilled. You can be a bad talker and ruin everything. Yeah, I've, I've seen this. A, AMAs are too important. And I would say an advisor, somebody to teach you how to run an AMA. Yep. Somebody or somebody to run the AMA for you and you're just there. You know, they're hosting the AMA. They're the ones doing most of the talking. Yep. 
I want to say that's super important in building trust because you can go in there, you can talk and talk and talk. Just, I've seen it happen so many times. I've helped people with this. I've, you know, I've gotten in calls with some founders and, you know, I ask them a question, they answer, I give them some tips, you know, and one, some tips I can say is just keep it short and simple and on your questions, I mean, on your answers. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they ask you something, keep it short and simple. Cause when you start over talking, that's when you start seeing things that are going to sound bad. Yeah. In my opinion. No, no, I agree. I, I've seen people short. do this. They'll, they'll pantomime and they get on parts that weren't even the question. And it actually doesn't produce confidence when somebody over talks. They actually seem, it sounds like, opposite but when somebody over talks about a subject they actually seem incompetent to the question instead of seeming competent to their entire project because they're wanting to like go off about this and that and this and that but it's really it, it seems like it's actually less intelligible if you would just yeah keep it short and concise definitely that's how you want to keep it short and simple answer the question move on to the next question that's yeah. what i always tell the guys i mean it's it's simple when you over talk you're gonna say things you don't mean or you're you yeah you're not gonna sound as confident i mean i think ama is the best way to build trust one of the best ways especially you know keeping transparency and delivery but if you don't do your first ama correctly and there's a lot of people watching and you're you're showing that you're uncertain or you don't know your stuff about the project Uh that's gonna hurt you a lot i would say make notes get with an advisor or you know get somebody who can who has more experience public speaking and let them help host. If you go up there and just start blabbering and talking and you're going to say stuff, you know, people are going <laughs> to ask you difficult. They're going to, they're going to ask you difficult questions. You yeah. know, people think it's a simple question. No, sometimes they go up there and ask you, if you don't know how to answer it and you're stuck up there, yeah, it's going to hurt you a lot. Yeah. And yeah. In that say, moment. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say that's why that's, a really good reason to hire an, an advisor or maybe a community manager that's really good experience just you know talking in front of people and answering those questions i want to say just make notes and you know keep it short and simple okay just some of tips thank you by the way um okay so Here's one question. So on your guys's project, you know, I wrote down why devote all your time to one project. But I guess, you know, kind of talking to you, I'm thinking more along the lines of how much time do you expect to devote to a project? And at what point can you exit if you can even exit a project, you know? Yeah, you know, the exiting part's a little iffy, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, that that's a hard topic to go through because there's actually some legal stuff behind that in terms of you're to exit and all that. I mean, you, you can pass IP rights to another person and they can take over the project, but you know, you, you're here to basically lead on the project. That's what the people want in terms of our breeding It's going to take about a year to complete. Okay. So we're, you know, we're here long-term for space yetis. We're here to continue the project, Mike and I. And what what was the first part of the question? Um, You you kind of answered it. I said, why devote all your time to one project? Yeah, I mean, you you can devote to different projects, but that's just going to kill your trust, in my opinion. If you go to a different project and you're starting from scratch, yeah, that's because people know you're going to put all that all that time towards starting from scratch all over again and just going to ignore the past project. Yeah. And there's, you know, if you were to, I guess, start working for another project, in other words, you know, that's not as bad in my opinion because eventually you can do an official partnership. You can combine some utility and all that. You mm-hmm. can do all that. But I, I say starting a project from scratch makes it seem like you're there for the money and not there for the people. Yeah, I could, I could see that. I think you answered that one. Okay. So here's a question I have. It's more art specific. In the grand scheme of a utility NFT, how important is the look of the art actually? Super important. Okay. Probably one of the most important aspects. Okay. You know, 
over utility, definitely. I want to say art's the number one thing. When people open up your collection and they see the art, that gives them, basically, if I were to open up a collection, I sell the art, and I like it. I wouldn't even care about the utility. I mean, yeah, I would look into it, but you wouldn't be as excited to look into it. You wouldn't spend that time to go to their Discord or white paper and read it because you're not that excited about art. Um, mm, yeah, that you know, makes I, sense. I think, I think in my opinion, if they were to open your collection, because you know, sales do come from secondary sales. If you're talking about Mint, it's the same thing. If they see your art on Twitter, because they're, they're going to see your posts, you know. They're, if they see your basically art on Twitter, they don't like it. They're not going to bother reading through the Twitter posts you put out yeah. or the giveaway you put out. They don't like the art. Um, so I do think it's the number one thing, especially secondary sales. They open your collection. You know, they're not going to want to investigate if they don't like your art. That's how I am. Okay. Um, of course, it does have killer utility, you know, the word spreads. But it's also delivering that utility, in my opinion. Just, you know, building that trust. And I think art and utility play a big role. But okay. art will play the bigger role. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense because you're talking first impressions. And yes. it, it's hard, you know, when you have an initial conversation with somebody and that's like, hor <laughs> it's like horrible, it's really hard to come back from it. You know, you have to build relationships slowly over time to kind of make your way out of that horrible interaction in the beginning. So that, that makes sense. I could see that, you know, that, that first response being what somebody sees and what somebody's going to think about you initially. Yeah, definitely. You're gonna get. A, you're eventually gonna get a first impression from everybody, and you want to make the best out of it. Yeah, everybody's yeah. gonna. Everybody's gonna look into your art first, in my opinion. Yeah, they're gonna be like, you know, somebody can tell you like, oh, check out this project. Yeah, you're gonna go check it out. What's the first thing that's gonna pop up? Mm, Nothing. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Know? And you're and you're right. Everybody too, you will know. look through it. You, you've got to have killer utility for the art to not matter, or clout. You know, you've got to have some other. You know extenuating circumstance that's like massive to kind of overwrite trend because you know we we, we kind of go through trends in the market you know right now it's like 3d people love like the 3d space like the board ape or not board ape but uh hapes have you have you been following hapes uh, i actually meant to the hate yeah did you you dirty dog you dirty dog. Yeah, that was a that was a tough whitelist to, to get that was a tough whitelist with 400k discord Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually meant to be a pretty, how, pretty how, good profit. How were you able to? Uh, it was through a trivia, actually. Very good. They, wow. ha they had these Twitch trivias. I <laughs> actually won. Dude, good job. Good job, man. Did, did yeah. it take a lot? Did it take a lot of time? No, it's probably. It, it, yeah, I actually did it, but I, I guess I was, they did recommend to stay active and discord you know how go in there talk a little bit yep. after whitelist yeah because no, I, I was reported like once or twice in the discord for being inactive i guess people try and report you so they remove your whitelist oh uh because -huh, other people want it kind of dumb yeah basically yeah yeah i was reported for being inactive but you know i got through it man i, I actually meant it yeah, congrats. That that was a good mint. That was a good one to get. <laughs> Cause you know Digimental. It was. I, I looked up his art and everything and uh he used to design for Nike and like these big brands like Adidas and doing their three D work. So as far as like an artist, it was it, it, that that was a really solid grab. Yeah, that that being part of their big roadmap, which is fashion and uh partnerships with clothing brands, you know, it's gonna help they have those connections. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I kind of want to move into a little bit of tokenomics. Um, how did you decide where to launch your token? What do you mean? Okay, so, well, I mean, I, I don't know if you got. are you guys on uh, Ethereum? Is that where your token is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so didn't know. ERC-20. Okay, well, there a lot of projects, what they're doing is they're launching their token on a different um, layer one because the gas fees. So I didn't know, how are you guys circumventing mm -hmm. gas fees and kind of working your way around that? No, yeah, we decided to launch ERC. Um, I want to say mostly because our dev, you know, the guy's super efficient with gas. Our mint was, you know, our mint gas was pretty cheap. And so far, our gas with the token has been really cheap. 
So I want to I want to say it's because the developer experience one who experience he has in terms of optimizing the contracts. Got it. Okay. That's why we decided to go with that. It's, he's just so good at it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. Is there anything specific that somebody should know before launching a token on a project? I mean, yes. It, it can get the project in trouble, in my opinion. Um, especially once you start talking about liquidity pools. Why is that? Uh, it can be marked under, you know, as a security token. Okay. By... Yeah, it can be marked, um, which could take your project down from OpenSea. So I want to see okay. when when people get into that. Um, it, it is risky. That's why a lot of projects don't have a liquidity pool how, for the same reason. Okay. How would they fix, you know, making sure that people can, you know, intertrade their token? You, you can intertrade it. Technically, you can transfer it to somebody. It is an ERC twenty token now. Trading it on the, on the what's it called? Exchanges, dexes. Exchanges. There you go. Trading on exchanges is different because you are going to have to have a liquidity pool. And now, if I were the the owner and give that liquidity pool, that would mark us as a security. Now there is another thing where people do that. They go liquidity pool by the community. Well, technically, the owner didn't do it, but it can still be marked as a, as a security. As, you know, people, these big projects that do have the liquidity pool, uh -huh. they have to go through a lot of basically uh, work with the lawyers and make sure they don't get marked as a security, which is really expensive. That's why mostly big projects do have that. Uh -huh. uh, I want to go into maybe Kong's. Yep, I'm yep. sure they put That's a, lot of, a lot of work into that. Uh, to make sure they don't get marked as a security. Okay, because OpenSea won't. What do you know? What their relation, their problem with having a token as a security on an NFT project is? Uh, I, I would say passive income. They're trying I to avoid say. that that at all. It's not supposed to be passive income. Yeah, I would say they're trying to avoid it. Um, I want to say passive income can be one of the reasons so it can be marked as a security. I, I I don't know much into it. Like I don't, I'm not really a tokenomics okay. guy. Yeah, to yeah. Get yeah. like really into it, like why it can be marked as security. But you know, I do know that these projects go through a lot of work with lawyers and stuff to you know keep them away from that and keep the project listed on OpenSea because there it can become a problem. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Uh, just something to be careful about if you're promising to launch a liquidity pool and all that. Yeah. It's, you have to go through legal work to, for that. Okay, to make sure that specifically doesn't hit a security, or else OpenSea is going to take you down. What if you know you're not on OpenSea? You know, other is is that an OpenSea yeah. specific thing? Or, or? I, I I've heard that. Um, I've heard people say that. Okay, what if we're not on OpenSea? But it's definitely going to hurt you. <laughs> it, it is going to hurt you not being on OpenSea, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, OpenSea's used probably you know, the most used one out of all of them. Yeah. Even, yeah. I, Cause eventually, um, right now, Ethereum is, uh, I used to be a miner. Well, I still am a miner, but that's how I got into NFTs. And, uh, so right now we're still proof of work. And once we go proof of stake, you know, the gas fees are going to drop to the nominal prices and all the other chains are going to become obsolete because people don't use Ethereum, you know, specifically because it's expensive, you know, as far as like, all the big dogs are on Ethereum, you know, OpenSea, NFTs, and uh, you can go to the other chains, but typically people move not because uh, ability, they move because of price. And, you know, like, um, same with BNB, you know, a lot of people moved over because it's easier for somebody to get into because, <laughs> you know, for you to um, verify your wallet on OpenSea, you know, it's $168 gas fee initially, and then there's a second gas fee. So, you know, uh, countries that aren't, you know, looking at, an extra thousand dollars to do inter interoperability between stuff. It's, you know, anyway, long story short, I really think uh, I agree with you. I think open is the way to go because Ethereum, once we go proof of stake is going to be bar none, the best, everybody will go with it. Yeah, definitely. I agree. 
Okay, I've heard, um, I've heard that people in the community respect your project. What would you say some of the reasons are? Give me a sec. No, you're good. Okay, sir. I had somebody walk in. Well, what was the question again? No, you're okay. Um, I've heard that people in your community respect your project or people in the community respect your project. What would you say some of the reasons are? I would say mostly because we we have been delivering. Okay. That's one of the, you know, the, these projects, a lot of projects make promises and they take a long time to deliver or they have a hard time delivering. I want to say since we already have our tokenomics out and we're basically almost have breeding out that means we have our ui and contract done in about a month it's pretty impressive in my opinion and that's yeah. just because we've been delivering just like that we can build trust and you know get more eyes on the project i mean it basically just says that we're completing our roadmap or we're going through our roadmap yeah yeah i, I want to say that's that. one of the big reasons also okay. just transparency and trust yeah, which has to be super crucial, especially with you guys pivoting on that initial mint, you know. I mean, huh, paying back everybody, um, yeah, I, I couldn't think of a more trust-building <laughs> exercise than, you know, somebody going through a pitfall with you, you know, which most people wouldn't do. Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, and now I'm going to go to some community questions, which really seems up your alley. Um, what have you seen grow relationships in your project? Relationship between the founder and, or just in between uh, community members? Uh, you know, I guess both. Um, yeah. So I, I would say founder and community would be talking in chat, interacting in chat, answering questions in chat, getting in voice chat maybe with your community members. I have yeah. this thing in, in my project where I call it a cove, a cove talk <laughs> where we just get in, in voice chat, you know, and we trade NFTs. I actually bought hape and flipped it while in chat and screen sharing and talking to everybody in there, you know, they're giving their opinions like, nah, you should hold it. You should sell it. I think that's one of the best ways to build trust, you know, founder to community, community, community. I want to say it's events. Um, Getting people to talk to each other and making friends is probably the most important thing. Hosting events that can happen. I mean, I, we pre mint, we hosted, um, what's that game called? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, let me see. Let me see real quick. I have my Steam open. Crab game. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We hosted, a, we hosted like, I want to say about 20, 30 crab games before we, we actually, um, minted and that just helps build community people are talking to each other it's competition i mean you're just building friends we also built i also live stream a lot of marbles um i had like i range from like 100 to 300 views on my twitch streams and just live streaming marbles talking to people just everything like that just going to help build a great community in my opinion okay okay um okay um so the I think my final question is, uh, how important is community compared to utility? Super important. Is I, I think community is number one thing. Um, you know, people can have different answers on that. Definitely, I think community is number one thing. I think it makes or breaks the project if people aren't together and willing to see the project going forward. They're just gonna dump it to the floor. And you're not going to be able to do anything about it unless you have some magical utility or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. game breaking utility that, you know, that's going to get new buyers in. But if the community's basically against the project or, you know, they flip and they are all going to start dumping and foot happens, you know, the community, a good community when foot happens will go around it. But a bad community when foot happens, they're all going to dump and they're not going to care about it basically wow and yeah yeah you, um you know you can kind of compare it to galactic apes right now uh, okay um they're they're found they're basically left 
and they have a 0.25 floor without a founder. Whoa. That's all community. Yeah, okay. Um, you can kind of go into that, and they have a really strong community. And any other project would have gone to 0. 0.001. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw that with um, Pumpkin Heads. I don't know if you saw them, but uh, they they just deleted their Discord and Twitter all at once, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. <laughs> on the listing prices. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly just like that. I mean, that's why I say community is number one, and it's the heart of the project. Definitely what runs the project in my opinion yeah other than you know the official team i could see that because you know you said uh (laughs) when fud happens you know if somebody's there for utility but there's fud well they're gonna leave of course because they were never there for anything beyond the ability of the project so you know if the if that's in question then why would they stay you know but if you're talking about community and somebody's there to make friends, or they have made friends, or they have developed relationships between people. Even if the utility wanes, they're there for something greater, you know, which is like human, a personal connection. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just think about the last time you went, you actually joined a community and actually talked in there and actually liked the project. That was, I want to say myself, was... You know, back in the day with Sympathy of the Devils, that was one of the projects that was really into the community. And I was in there talking for like a couple hours a day. I mean, that's where, you know, you get connected to the community and get connected to the founders and everything. And it's, it just helps you out. I mean, I don't know if you have that experience with you just get so connected with the community that you're in there talking and making friends, you know? Yeah, it's, no, I, I've never, I never. Yeah, it's definitely something to. I know. I know a lot of people have experienced it. I mean, you you, you see sometimes when you go into communities, you see the same names in those communities, yeah. just talking and chatting. It's basically they're they're going through that right now. They they love the community, and I think the more people you have doing that in your community, interacting with each other is better. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Cove, I think that's it, man. Thank you, by the way. I really appreciate that you you taking time. This was like super, <laughs> super informative, you know. Um, probably the most informative conversation I've ever had in NFTs. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Like I said, I I can stay here talking for hours, but you know, one thing yeah. I recommend is go try it yourself. 